we have to make the decisions now in order to have a better lifestyle for our children by the year 2050. That are really more innovative and perhaps more conservative than, than the ones they're trying to copy from the West. Now I, what might be called the second level but very important problems uh, need to be addressed. Uh, I would say air pollution is one of the obvious problems that need to be addressed. If the leaders of the world become aware of the challenges that you children, when you will be 40 or 50 years old, 35 years from now, you and your children and the children of our children will confront dramatically different challenges than the ones that we are confronting today. When your children and the children of my children will reach 2050 and the world will be 9 billion people, they will confront different wars about different challenges. The wars will be about clean drinking water. The wars will be about food security because we will be two billion more people to eat and the water will be contaminated. Number three, the wars will be your children and my children will have to confront the challenge of the adverse impacts of climate change. If we don't do any decisions today, we don't have, we cannot have the luxury to wait until 2050 to make decisions. We have to make the decisions now in order to have a better lifestyle for our children by the year 2050. One of the things that has impressed me over the years is that as China has developed, one thing that it has paid close attention to is ensuring that basic services, basic infrastructure is available widely to all of its population. Uh, China does not have the kind of slum areas that one finds in cities, in other cities of, of Asia. Um, so there are other cities that have done well in uh, providing services, but China is one of the, the only country that has started from a fairly low income level, has grown rapidly and has done that without the emergence of serious slum areas. So I find that very impressive because China has been able to uh, expand and yet at a very basic level has provided basic human needs to all of its population and I, I think China should be congratulated on that. Uh, it has problems, every country and has problems and uh, Certainly, now I, what might be called the second level, but very important problems, uh, need to be addressed. Uh, I would say air pollution is one of the obvious problems that need to be addressed. I think many people in China recognize that. Uh, and so I hope that's a big part of the coming agenda. I think um, there's a lot of poverty in the world. There a significant portion of all of the people on earth are living in poverty. China is having a tremendous period of expansion right now and an awful lot of people in China are entering the, the middle class for the first time and um, it's hard to know where that's going to stop. The economic boom is, is continuing but one of the big challenges of course is that um, like the middle class is every place in the world they're going to be challenged now in the 21st century to adopt lifestyles which are not quite as uh, consuming as the lifestyles of people in the 20th century. So um, right now there's a big desire for middle class Chinese to adopt all of the trappings of Western society. And I think we're all looking at the 21st century for people to be living 
a more conservative lifestyle, consuming less. And so it's a challenge for all the middle class in the world, but especially for China that's just becoming middle class. It's an opportunity to adopt lifestyles that are really more innovative and perhaps more conservative than, than the ones they're trying to copy from the West.